Okay, members and friends, so now we're at the blackberry bush. As you can see, we've got an infestation with this too. It's all over. Right, they're everywhere, people. So anyway, I'm gonna pick some and put them on the tray and start dehydrating these. Right? And then we've got lots more up on the path yet, so hold on. Okay, people, it's the next day. So, Andre and I, put those scissors down. Okay, hey, what did I tell you about those scissors? Put them in the bowl. Yes, you can't walk around with them sticking out like, oh, look at that tomato, that's a nice one. When you're walking around, just put them in there like that. Okay, so we're getting tomatoes. What? Oh, don't, don't, don't waste it. It can go in the canning jar. So we're, what we're doing is we're gathering up some seeds. Right, Andre? Mm -hmm. And we're planting this. And, and uh, mm. a plum tree. And we're getting some plums. No, it's, and we're, it's, but we're going to get, just hold on. It's, it's and we're going to plant a few now. of these plants in the ground before it gets late, too late in the season. We already did this one and it rooted itself. So it can live in part shade. And Mickey the gardener cat. Why are we not surprised? Right, Mickey? Mickey! Mickey the gardener cat. She's pretty. Mickey's so pretty. Mickey. Mickey? What you thinking, Mickey? What are we doing today, Mickey? Mickey, are you a supervisor? Mickey. Is that what it is? You're just the supervisor? Okay, anyway, we'll be back. Okay, people, change of plans. You see that? <laughs> it's going right there. Because when I have rabbits, I have to clean the cage, right? Come, come here. So come you don't want to lay too much brick down. Come here. Come here. Just wait a minute, Andre. He's going to... I'll come over there in a second. He wants to show me the, pl the plums. So what you do is you pull out that board. And you take a rake underneath it. So if I put something easy to pick up when the time comes, something like that, I, I, I then I can get in there and clean it when the time comes. Come on. So that's what I'm going to do. Come on, so hold... Okay, let's go see... He's so determined to get these plums, people. Hmm? Oh, uh. you already got one. Okay, did you did you check for spiders? No. Nope. Where's your stick? I, I probably like this one. Well. It, it, it was over there. Okay, there's a whole bunch in there, Andre. You not, can not, see them. No, you get them. No, you get them. Okay, no, I got to go, I people. I want to get that one right there. Okay, you go in there and get it. Huh? Okay, people, so I kind of took a detour here. <laughs> this... Anything's possible in this yard. As you can see, I started to clear out in here. Cleared out the pond area a bit just to kind of get a handle on those weeds. Right? And then I planted that uh, bush right there. And I took another one that was in a planter pot that's been sitting there since 2008. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many years? <coughs> Seven. <coughs> Seven years. So we'll see what happens to them. And this again is going to be our little community pond area. Right? So we'll just see how it goes. And uh, I didn't get to this today, but I did get the plums and some tomatoes. And this is lettuce seeds. We got a few seeds. It's a big bucket of weeds, <laughs> right? Ooh, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Oops. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Actually, I got a couple of other pretty flowers I'm going to press for Andre, so I think I'm going to pick that and press that one for Andre, too. Hold on. Okay, people, so next day, I'm not outside. The only thing I'm going to do later is go get some kale leaves. I'm starting the rice here, four cups of rice, six cups of water, two, three tablespoons of butter, some sea salt, and a can of um, coconut milk, All right? I'm going to start with the tomatoes first, people, with the canning, and I'm going to do it in a pressure canner because it takes about 15 minutes in a pressure canner, so hold on. Okay, people, so I'm having a really rough day here, <laughs> and I'm moving like a snail. Anyway, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to chop up this, and I'm going to chop up this, and then I'm going to cook it in a pot for a little while, and then I'm going to throw them in some jars, and I'm going to put some lemon in there and some salt, and then I'm going to pressure can it. Whoops. 
So we'll be right back. Okay, so that's all the tomatoes minus that and that. That's a nice size for a sandwich or something. Chopped them all up into little pieces. There's only really one green onion in there, although I'd say at least half are 50% ripe. So more unripe than ripe. There was a couple in there that was quite ripe. So it's just a mosh podge of tomatoes that are growing in my yard and I harvest them all at one time. Technically, you're supposed to not harvest them off the vines after they've been frozen or after they died. Last year, I did tomatoes around this time with John. And um, I just know I had a whole bunch. <laughs> So, anyway, this time I know this year they're coming, because I'm more prepared this time, I had it in my head already what I was going to do, and I've done it before, so, and I did them in a pressure canner last time, too, so, because you can, then it goes faster, right, like 15 minutes, so one pint to one liter or a quart is 15 minutes in a pressure canner, right, in terms of my um, altitude, which is sea level, so 10 pounds pressure. 15 minutes okay and you add lemon even even if you were to do them all green which you can um, you'd still add the lemon to bring up the pH anyway we'll be back pear. I, know. I don't know I can't believe it. there's pears like everywhere up there yeah I, but well, well, what about Ooh. the big ones up there okay I come nope Please no. No, you can't go on this one here. No, oh, John. I can pick those ones. Those are low. <laughs> now I know how to pick them. Arcane. 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 I'm going to ball for you. He's concentrating, Andre. Please no. No, just look. They're falling. You might want to stand back before one bonks you on the head. Come on, I'm serious. No. You'll get hit on the head. And next, you, no, I'm serious, they'll no. fall. That would hurt, God. they're still ripe. Not, they're, they're unripe, they're green. Watch those branches, they'll break off. They're brittle. But I cut it last year and they just really bloomed out. Like everywhere. I know, you really like to be up there with Uncle Mark Kane, but not this time. No, because that's not a very good landing. You'll just slide right off it. I No, I will, I will sit. No, it's dirty, Andre. Yeah. Huh? Why is it rotten? Well, you don't know that. Put it in a bowl. I'll look at it later. The one next to it looks okay. No, that's rotten too. Well, it got bruised. That's why. That's why I'm having you pick them because when they fall, they bruise, and then they bruise on the inside, right? Uh, just leave it there. I'll put it in the compost. It's good for the compost. Just don't be falling over the edge there, Andre. I want those ones over there. It's like a whole whack of them and they're big. Okay, look, I see some down here, look. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're up, but, there. yeah, but we're not picking tomatoes. Nana's got tomatoes on the stove. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop off some of these, bring them in, and I boiled up some rice and we'll make some cabbage rolls, you'll see. Oh, my rice. Okay, so anyway, I'm having panic attack after panic attack here today. I'm not really accomplishing very much. Got a whole bunch of pears anyway. Gonna have to put them downstairs and in between um, paper towels so that they can ripen. But isn't this leaf beautiful? Look at this. Isn't that nice? That's for K. 
kale rolls. Okay, people, back at it. <laughs> it's like two days later. I got busy. Uh, and I haven't been feeling very well. All this stress, you know, with Uncle John and just, you know, struggling every day with something, right? But besides the point, this is tomatoes from my garden. As you can see, I just kind of did it that way. These are apples, big bag for $1.50. So because I don't have time to make apple pie and freeze them, I'm just cut them, put them in some water with a little bit of lemon juice, let them sit around for a bit so that they get kind of saturated. And then I'm going to just put them on a cookie sheet with a, uh, what's it called? Wax paper. First I'll just take them out, put them on a little bit of paper towel so they can absorb some of the juice so that it doesn't get frostbit. And then after that, throw them in the freezer and then bag them, right? You can see. Those are big apples, people. Look how big that apple is. I got like a bag and a half, two bags. For like two dollars. <laughs> Hold on. No. So I guess this is what you call a video log, right? Uh, some people do makeup and, you know, their life and whatever. This is my life. So as you can see, I took the stems from that and I'm dehydrating. And then eventually I will turn this into powder and use it for a cracker. Here's another batch of kale that I'm just got tons all over the yard. It only had a few little specks of aphids coming in. Remember, I sprayed it with the ginger side people. It worked really well. I highly recommend it. Um, oh, this one these. here, you can see, right, I missed a leaf, right, but other than that, the whole plant itself only had a couple little spots like that, right, and uh, so I'm going to dehydrate that, and then the stems later, right, this. we'll go this. like this batch here, talk about these. oh, and what is Andre doing, what are I, you I, doing, I picked these, you painted those? Yeah. And what well, are they? Well, I didn't paint this part. Well, you're going to have to paint that part. Don't drop that on your toe. That's a pretty big rock. This one has a happy face? Where's the happy face? Uh, kind of has a happy face. Oops. Like oh, there thing. it is. There's the happy face right here. And there's the nose. And I see there's the eye. There's the eye. There's the nose. And there's the happy face. Okay, people. We'll be back. Okay, so this is what I'm going to put in some hamburger. These are the onions from my yard. Yellow and white. Some garlic. I'm probably going to use some of the tomato that I canned the other day, but the lid, this one popped off in the canner. I pressure canned it. So I'm going to put some of that in there after I fry up the hamburger. This is some of the kale stem that I'm going to cook up with the onion and the garlic. So hold on. Okay, so starting the hamburger, just some garlic, a little bit of seasoning salt, right? Fry that up. Here's the rice. I already sauteed the onions a little bit and a little bit of that chopped up kale. Sprinkled some pepper in there. I'm going to stir it around, then taste it, probably add a bit more pepper. And then after the meat's cooked, I'm going to put it in there, and then we're going to start rolling up the kale. Hold on. Okay, so that's what they look like. Okay, so I'm on to pears here. Little flies, right? These were just sitting out there in the floor in a bucket, so anyway, I washed them, everything's fine. So I'm just gonna cold pack and then at some point make some jam. I also have some in the fridge that I bought on discount, so hold on. Okay, so so far this is only costing me like three bucks. Seriously, a dollar for the sugar, a dollar twenty-five for the lids, and I've only I guess like twelve lids, and pff, some energy. <laughs> the jars I had a long time ago. Hold on. Okay, so now they're in the pot, boil for twenty-five minutes, and then these ones in here, people, I got for, oh, I don't know, I think it was four dollars and fifty cents. They've been in the fridge for a few days. So anyway, I am going to can these ones, just like I'm doing in the big pot there. And then these will be jam with some old blueberries I have. So hold on. Okay, 
So this is a hot pack. What happened was when I did this, <laughs> I don't know, I broke the pressure in in the canning process because first of all it boiled everything okay. I don't think I filled them up properly, but you can see this is down. This one didn't even seal, right? And it lost a lot of liquid. And when I opened up the lid, which this isn't really a water bath canner, this is a pressure canner. So anyway, I pulled out the jar with the prongs and it was running like a sieve. It was just pouring out of here. At first there was this other one in here. I thought maybe the bottom of the jar cracked. <laughs> so what happened when the water was boiling, I opened up, you know, turned off the stove, let it sit for five minutes, a couple minutes or whatever it was, took off the lid, and the water was all purple. So I panicked and I immediately just grabbed the uh, jars and well, didn't even get to the counter and it was already starting to drip. And one was just pouring out. So anyway, um, the benefit to doing it to a hot pack is with a plum, they tend to have a lot of moisture in them. So when you're cooking, if you don't leave enough space in here, I gave it a half inch. I should have gave it an inch and a half to compensate for the moisture coming out of the pear as it was heating up. And that's probably why this happened. These other ones are okay. You can see right to the top. Right, so you have to give them enough headroom if you're doing them as a cold pack. But if you put them in a pot with boiling syrup for two minutes, let them boil, and then turn it off and let it sit for 30 minutes, and then can it, you're going to reduce this from happening. That's that's what you're going to do. You're going to prevent that from happening. And it worked. I had four cans, four jars. I didn't get as many. The pot was almost just as full. Right? But because I had pre-cooked them and brought them down, I got four condensed jars versus seven of those. Now, mind you, these were smaller, so there was more in the pot where these were bigger. And, um... Anyway, and then I have this syrup. <laughs> so I don't really want to throw it out because it has sugar and everything in it. So I'm going to put it in the fridge after it cools down. And then tomorrow, maybe do those other plums. They're not quite right, but that's okay. With this, so this doesn't go to waste. And beans. That's what we're going to do. Beans. Okay, so we're not doing beans yet. I still have to finish up this little batch. These are nice and... Perfect. <laughs> so, based on what I did last time, I am going to use the syrup left over from the last batch. All right, it's two days old, because I just did it not yesterday, but the day before. And I'm going to cut these, pit them, and I'm going to bring them to a boil for two minutes, and then I'm going to hot pack them. And then when you put them in the canner, and you boil them for 25 minutes. Technically, you don't have to sterilize the jars. Now, I've read somewhere, uh, you know, I'm always reading people, right, that you really shouldn't do them in the oven, but I don't know. I need to do some more research on that one. But when you're water bathing for over 25 minutes, I think it is, like for 25 minutes or 20 minutes, you don't technically have to sterilize the jars. You never have to sterilize the jars when you do pressure canner. If you're doing fruit, you don't necessarily have to sterile the jars because of the sugar. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm tired. Anyway, I'm going to sterile these for 10 minutes. I think you do. You can just sterile them for 10 minutes in boiling water. And then I'm going to hot pack those plums with the leftover syrup that I have. And then whatever's left over is going in for jam with the other stuff I have in the fridge. Hold on. Okay, so as you can see, I took out the seeds. Now, they're not fully ripe, but that's okay because they're a little tart, right? They're going to be more sour. But you're putting them in sugar, and this is more like for when you're having a meal, like, you know, and you just kind of put it on the side of your dish or something, right? I mean, we'll see what it tastes like after the fact, but if you make them too, 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 you know, if you can them too, too ripe, you know, turn mushy, and 
you know, better for jam, right? But uh, anyway, you see what I'm saying. So you put the pears or plums or whatever into the syrup. Yeah, I'm not doing that right now. And, uh, you know, have your syrup boiling bowl for one minute or so. And then turn it down to low, medium, like minimum, very low. And just keep it warm. They say leave it for 30 minutes, but I'm not going to. I think it depends on how firm your your plum is because as you can see it's already turning to mush right some of them so and the purpose of this is so that when you can them they already released a lot of air the difference between a hot pack and a cold pack is when you hot pack them you release a lot of air so you're not going to get as much seepage I cut my thumb there people can you see that <laughs> that's from seeds from the plums right and really sliced it Anyway, um, that was a couple of days ago. Uh, so when you're hot packing, when you're cooking your fruit like this, what you're doing is you're releasing the air. So when it gets into the water bath, you're not going to get as much seepage coming out. And also remember, don't break the pressure, right? Because if you break the pressure, if you take out the jars too fast after you turn off the canner, after it boils for 25 minutes, and you don't let the pressure come down for 5 minutes before you take the jars out, you're going to get... A river coming out of them that's what happened with me with the last batch of these kind of plums I didn't know that but now I know uh, kind of tired again t today people I don't know this ringing in my ears and perpetual tooth pain and the coma is off the roof I can feel it so I don't know people so obviously when you're canning if you're not like been doing it for 50 years it's a learning experience right so Another advantage to hot packing is you get more in your jar, right? If you pack them in raw, you're going to get more air, more apt for leakage, and you're not going to get as much fruit in the jar. This is from it being cooked, right? These are little air bubbles. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference. I left about an inch head, head space here. Right? If you were packing them in, this one's a little more higher than an inch. If you were packing them in raw, I read that you should probably do it an inch and a half. Um, packing hot pack, there's a half an inch, I think. Uh, I read like a million things at a time, people. But anyway, uh, put your thing in there, you know, remove out the air bubbles from inside, but you're not going to find that many in on a hot pack. You're going to get these little ones coming up, I can see that as you know so maybe give it five minutes just to kind of for them to release themselves um, and then can it 25 minutes in the canner with the lid on okay so as you can see the water is clear so I didn't get any leakage because if I did it would be purple um, keep the lid on after you turn off the stove let it sit for five minutes and then take off the lid and when you're taking your prongs be careful to not touch the lid grab underneath the rim of the glass because if you pull this you're gonna release the seal and then you're gonna get more leakage right so there you go and one more okay you're gonna see what I'm talking about in action here do you see it's seeping out seeping out of the jar so it wasn't seeping out in the water but as soon as I took it out, so maybe I should have left it for five more minutes in the canner before I took it out. Hmm. Right? This one, a little bit too, right? You can see the discoloration. Mind you, this is pink, so when it's going to get wet, but you can definitely see the color on it, right? So this is seeping. You can see it running down. Whoops. Right there. It will still seal. Right? It's just this one here a little bit too I think yeah here it is you can see it it's seeping out now that's normal it can happen but I think it's more pressure related hmm okay so now on to uh, plum and blueberry jam the plum is at the bottom of this container here from when I did the first batch of plums these are the ones that I bought and they were very ripe and a couple of maybe mine right and then an old box of, like it was only like maybe a, a quarter of a box 
a, not even a quarter of a box of blueberries that were sitting in the fridge. So I'm going to cook those up and combine them together and make a jam, right? And then after that, I'm trying to think about doing these tomatoes. And then depending on the time, which is already getting late, <laughs> beans. So I haven't done beans yet. And then before you start, right, you have to blend your plum because the, the, the skin won't break up in the cooking process. Blueberries, yes, but not plum, right, so for sure. And then also, too, you, you get a better count in terms of numbers of cups, right? Hold on. Okay, so 12 cups of berry. This tastes more like a blueberry, and I put 7 cups of sugar. I know I'm using lots of sugar. Uh, actually, to calculate out for the recipe with my little blue book there that I like, it would have been 8 cups, but I thought I'd taste it first, and it tastes good just as is with the seven cups. I tend to put the more sugar in because it helps to um, turn it into jam. That's the first thing. And then it's also a preservative, right? You know, so if it sits in the fridge for a little while or something like that, you know, it's not going to spoil on you as if it was straight up um, fruit. If it was just, you can can straight up fruit without sugar. I'm pretty sure I read that last night, people. <laughs> right? Um, just like you can can food without salt right uh sugar in this case is being used more as a thickener and a preservative right more as a preservative i'm using it as a preservative so anyway that's 12 cups of berry it tastes more like blueberry than plum with seven cups of sugar and then we bring it to a boil we got my trusty sweater on i'm going to stand here 15 minutes and just keep stirring it as it's boiling don't over boil because you'll make a toffee <laughs> if you think you can go 20 minutes or 25 minutes trust me you'll just make a toffee right and I don't know I got jars with toffee in them so I don't know what's gonna happen when it comes time to open them up but that's for another day people hold on okay so the advantage of using this pot which is wide right it's not very high but it's wide um, is you can actually do a double batch in it and I've tripled it too triple is pushing it because as it foams up you know you got to be careful but if you turn down the heat for a little while, right, you know, instead of having it max, maybe you have it on eight and a half, nine, the foam will cut down a little bit. It won't be so vigorous, right? And then you can always turn it up. What you want to do is just get it vigorously boiling for 15 minutes, right? But you you have to keep stirring it. Otherwise, the sugar is going to burn on the bottom, right? And again, you can always tell when this stuff is starting to get done because uh, it, uh, it spits right but some things congeal better than others I don't remember what it was maybe it was blueberry jam but you know it was already starting to thicken up even before the 15 minutes and uh, so anyway I've got it at between max and and nine so I'm at a nine and a half right now and it's not spitting but I started the timer at 15 minutes and I'm at 13 minutes so you'll see within 13 minutes how this at this temperature, I won't change it because it's not so bad right now, right? It's not spitting all over the place. But in another 10 more minutes, it will thicken up and you'll start seeing it fly out in blobs. And that's when you know it's starting to get done, right? That's how I can always tell. But you got to boil it for at least 15 minutes on the highest heat that you can get it going on other than having it going all over the place, right? You know, I mean, you don't want it like taking off like a rocket, right? But also, too, if you stir it, it helps to prevent it from spitting as fast, right? If you leave it by itself, it will really just start going off like a rocket. But anyway, hold on. Oh. Okay, so three jars of plums, right? Five jars of jam. They're five bucks a jar in the stores at this size. And still a little bit. The jam itself didn't cost me no more than... Uh, let's see, <laughs> less than a dollar fifty for the sugar, and the, the plums were fifty cents, so that's two bucks. A half a thing of lids, right? Is is what another two dollars and twenty cents? So let's just put it at two dollars, right? So that's what two and four, so five, six bucks at best. Okay. So my day is almost over here. It's 1.30 in the morning. I did four jars of beans, as you can see. 
two jars of green tomatoes with just salt. And I had a little extra lemon from a different jar, so it was one, one, one tablespoon and one tablespoon. Technically, if they're green onions, you don't need to do it, but I wasn't going to throw it out. And then three jars of tomatoes from my garden. So that's three, seven, eight, nine. I just did another eight more nine. Eight, nine more jars. That's what I did today, people. And one that full in the fridge. And Andre and I went and picked the last batch of blackberries. Which, as you can see, there's a lot of green and red ones. which I'm going to just use like you would a lemon peel or something if you wanted to add something tart. I don't know if I'll ever use them, but anyway. And then I've got this. So I'm trying to fill up with this last one here, but I don't know if that's going to happen because there wasn't that many blackberries left. But we'll see. <laughs> 